appreciate the opportunity to speak in front of this group. Just uh, for my for my side of the thing, uh, my business. One of the ways that I find a lot of my clients is through organizations like this and others and by getting to speak in front of you. So hopefully what I'll share with you over the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes or so will be of interest to you. And uh, uh, similar to uh, what was said earlier, maybe you'll get a takeaway from uh, some of the things that I share. So let me give you a real quick rundown on my background, sort of how I ended up where I'm at. Uh, I spent a long time in the corporate world, about 28 years, working for two fairly large multinational companies, one you would probably know fairly well, Texas Instruments, and another one you probably don't know called Copperweld. But I uh, spent my last 20 years with Copperweld and ran uh, one of their business units uh, uh, inside a fairly uh, good-sized, privately held multinational company. Uh, it was a manufacturing business and uh, was up in Fayetteville, Tennessee is where my main facility was and that's where uh, I was located and that's what brought me to this area about 22 years ago. Uh, business had about 150 million in annual sales, three locations, two in the U.S., one overseas. Uh, the overseas facility and the one we had in Rhode Island were two acquisitions that I was directly involved with in terms of identifying them and bringing them into the company fold. Uh, I had over 200 employees worldwide and I did business in over 60 countries and I personally traveled to about 30 of them along the way to either get things started or keep them going. Uh, as most of you have probably experienced if you've worked in the private sector at all, uh, things change fairly rapidly and, and I was subject to the same thing. My company was sold in 2006, which uh, left me in a, in a different situation than I had ever been in before where I no longer had my corporate position. Uh, looking for what my next act would be, uh, I started to do some consulting in the industry I came out of and did that in 2007 and decided rather than uh, going back to work for another company, I thought I'd give it a try on my own. So for those of you that are either entrepreneurs in your own right or budding or want to be entrepreneurs, uh, I'm sure you've been faced with a similar situation. So I connected with a, an organization called the Institute for Independent Business, which is an international accreditation body made up of people like myself, senior executives from all walks of life. They did two things for me. One verified I had the business skills that I claimed, that was easy. And the second one was show them how to translate them into working with local entrepreneurs in your community, with the premise being that uh, most entrepreneurs uh, usually are very strong in some areas, but, but weak in a lot of others, and there's a need for help, and they show us how to, how to do that. So I started my uh, business advisory practice in the early part of 2008 here locally, and uh, one of the first things I ran into is having been in the corporate world for a long time, I found I didn't know a soul in my local community because I was never here. And the first thing I had to do, like many of you are doing, is go find ways to, to get connected in the, uh, in the local community. So I started joining a whole bunch of organizations and attending networking events and slowly but surely established enough credibility that allowed uh, me to start to work with some companies here locally. And each year I've been able to, to grow my business significantly by working with more and more uh, business owners, entrepreneurs in this community. My client base looks very similar to what uh, Lewis described as his client base. Uh, my clients are entrepreneurs. They typically are anywhere from about one to seven million in annual revenue and anywhere from about five to 50 employees. And the, the dirty little secret in my, in my profession and what I do is I learn as much from my clients as they do from me because I will see some of the best industry practices from some of my clients and simultaneously some of the worst business practices from some of my clients and often it's the same client that's doing both. So it's, a, it's an interesting learning experience. Uh, my typical engagements with my clients are based on what they need. I help them in whatever area they struggle with. But uh, there are some things that I have learned and observed over the years in, in working with my clients and I want to share some of that with you because I think for those of you that are either business owners or want to be business owners, I think you'll find this of interest. So first and foremost, let me talk about the profile, the typical uh, business owner that I run across. They usually fall into at least one of the following three categories. Most of them have two, some will have all three. And those are either a technical skill about something, uh, an area or an issue that they have passion about, and then lastly, they get tired of working for a living for someone else and they make the leap of faith and go into business for themselves. For those of you that are owners, show of hands, how many of you fall into that category? How many of you fall into all three of them? Okay, so, so that's my point. This is the typical profile. The thing that most of these owners run into is that when they get started, they find themselves having to do everything, and that is a difficult task to uh, accomplish. 
So I want to share with you a couple of the myths and realities of being a business owner. Okay, and for those of you that are not business owners, you may think what I'm going to say is a myth is a, is a reality. It is not. So, so here's the myths. Uh, you become a business owner, you get rich really fast. All right, first thing that happens. Okay, the reality is you're the last person paid in your company. Everybody else gets paid first. The next myth is you have all the time in the world. You can come and go as you please. No, it's a 24-7 responsibility. Okay, next one. My life is going to be easy because I can tell people what to do and, and, and work my own schedule. No, you have pressures in every direction and a whole bunch of directions you hadn't even thought of. Uh, next myth, my friends and family will give me all the support I need. <laughs> the reality of it is they don't care. Okay? And, and for those of you that are entrepreneurs and you have a spouse, uh, all the spouse will ask is, is there enough money to pay the mortgage this month or to pay the kid's tuition, right? I mean, that's, they don't want to hear anything else, right? They just want to know it's okay. And then the last item that's a, that's a myth is that managing people is easy. And I will tell you, it is a learned skill and it takes a lot of practice and a lot of work to do it properly, okay? The second area that I want to share with you quickly is, a, I know my time is starting to run short, but uh, the next thing I want to talk about is, is the four common problems that I run across with virtually every business owner that I've worked with. First and foremost, they have a lack of cash in their business, and that usually is caused by some combination of an underpriced product or service. They often, in an effort to get business, sell their items for far less than they need to. Uh, and then another area they get into trouble with is they give credit to people they have no business giving credit to. So those, those are the two areas on the cash. The next critical area that I find is they have a lack of time, and it's mainly because they're a terrible delegator, because they have been used to being the all-knowing doer, and they have control issues. So that's another area that I usually will work with them on. The next common problem I run across is, is rampant organizational mistakes. And that is usually because there are a lack of systems, a lack of processes, and a lack of controls, and no metrics to see what's actually going on in their business. And that leads to all the mistakes that occur. And then the last thing that I call organizational discord, this is when you talk to the employees in the company and they all say, we don't know what's going on, we don't know what's happening, we don't know what's important. Well, that's because the owner has not really done a good job of communicating his vision, his mission, and his values for the business and doesn't keep his employees, and I keep using the term his, his or her as the owner, the employees, not giving them communication on what is going on, what is important, what's changed, and that creates the organizational discord. Uh, and then the last area that uh, are some of the secondary issues that they run across, most of these owners don't have a good business plan. They haven't really put together what it's going to take to make me successful. Uh, again, I'll give another plug to the sponsor. They don't have a bank relationship. And, and Lewis will probably tell you it's much easier to come to me before you have a problem than if you come to me after you have a problem because there's little you can do for them. Uh, the other thing that, uh, other couple of things here is the owners typically have polarized strengths. They're extremely strong in a couple areas, but then they are what I call very flat in a whole bunch of others. And they often are reluctant to seek outside help to help them in those areas where they are weak. So that's, that's where a place where someone like myself can come in to help. So Vicki, I think I need to wrap this up if I'm looking at the clock. I'm still good. All right, so I'll, I'll, I'll talk for another minute or two. Uh, but in any event, uh, the business owner, uh, for those of you that are, it is the loneliest position on the planet, and mainly because you have no one to talk to. I mean, that's, that's it in a nutshell. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, your spouse doesn't want to hear all the nitty gritty of what's going on. Your employees, candidly, there's some things you just can't share with them. And although there may be some peer business owners you can talk to, they got enough of their own problems. They don't want to hear about yours. So having someone to talk to that can give you meaningful feedback is an important thing for every business owner to have. And for those of you that are owners, if you don't have someone that you can talk to that can give you meaningful feedback, uh, I suggest strongly you seek someone out, whether it's someone like myself or others, because there's plenty of other business consultants and advisors in this area. Uh, but it is important to have someone to talk to. It will make a world of difference for you. All those great ideas that run through your head at 3 o'clock in the morning when you're staring at the ceiling, if you say them out loud to somebody, they, you'll either turn out that they were really good ideas, or as I like to say, uh, when they share some of this stuff with me, what were you drinking last night before you went to bed? 
So uh, having someone to talk to matters, and it can help you make better decisions, make your whole process a whole lot better. Uh, that's really all I have from a prepared vantage point. I'll take a question or two, and then, and then I'll turn it back to Vicki. So. How do people find uh, business advisors like you, and what would be the average cost to a small business trying to get started? Uh, in terms of, of how to find them, there's plenty of us out there. Uh, and, and again, go to these networking organizations. You can go online. If you, if you type in uh, you know, business advisor, business consultant, Huntsville, there's a whole bunch of us that'll pop up. I usually come up pretty high on the list. But, uh, but anyhow, so that's my self-plug. And then in terms of the cost, all of my programs are tailor-made to my clients. So it is a combination of how much of my time they can tolerate in the course of a, of a month and economically what they can afford. And, and those two things I always customize for the client. Uh, so there's no, there's no cookie cutter. This is what it is. Yes, sir. Sir, question. You, you said something that I had heard before that, you, that one of the problems in people starting business is getting credit to someone who doesn't deserve it. I haven't heard that before. Can you can clarify that a little more? Say, say that question You here. said that one of the biggest problems that people who have business uh, do is they get credit, they should be getting Credit yes. Uh, can you explain that? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. If, if you have a business, you sell your product or service, and you say, pay me when you can, or pay me in 30 days, or pay me in 60 days, okay, uh, that, that kind of credit is what I'm talking about, where you're, where you're giving credit to a client, uh, and candidly, that's what other institutions are designed to do. You as a business, unless you're in the banking business or the lending business, don't want to be doing that. Okay. okay?